Now in our last video we talked about not only growing food to be able to take care of your own family, but even to help out those people that live around you. And one of the things we talked about is grafting. That's a way that you can make it much cheaper to grow more things like fruit trees and not break the bank. Very quick review of what grafting is. If you buy a, an apple tree or a pear tree, it doesn't work by just taking an apple seed and putting it in the ground. If you took a Honeycrisp apple seed and put it in the ground, you have no idea what tree, I mean, it's going to be an apple tree, but you don't know what it's going to taste like. And so the way that it's done is you actually take a little tiny branch from a Honeycrisp tree and you cut it off. That's called a scion and you attach that to something called a rootstock, and that's the root of another apple tree that's growing out of the ground. You put those together, and all the fruit that grows out of the top of that above the cut is going to be a Honeycrisp in that specific illustration or whatever variety, whether it's Red Delicious or Fuji, what have you. And so Hiram's going to show us how to do this. This can save you tons of money and it can make it so that you can have a bunch of different varieties on one particular tree. So he's going to show us from his own homestead how to do some simple grafting and some of the tools that you might want to have if you're going to start grafting. So I've got a failed graft here. Most of them take maybe. Uh, 70, 80 percent or more of them take, but uh, this was a Haro Crisp uh, graft that did not take, and so I'm going to regraft it with a Gem pair, which is a GEM. It's a very uh, disease resistant and a good pair from what I've read. I've not had it, but um, I really want uh, disease resistant stuff on the place. I have a personal view of Bible prophecy, how uh, Matthew 24, signs of the times, pestilence, disease, that that's going to get worse and worse. And so I want disease resistant stuff as much as possible because I think uh, disease not only among humans and animals, but even in the plant kingdom may increase. And so the gem pear is a good disease resistant pear. So I'm going to try regrafting uh, this. Uh, you can do it same year. It's uh, putting forth green. I picked it off here trying to push the graft. So uh, still good root stock. And I'm going to graft the the uh, gem uh, scion on it. So I've got just a piece left here of my gem scion wood. It, it came, it was probably this long, and I've got just a little bit of it left. So we're going to give it a try. So I've got two buds. I like to have uh, two buds, although sometimes I'll graft with one bud or, or with three buds. But I've got uh, two buds on this. And... Um, so let me set that down, make sure I don't lose track of it. That can be dangerous. I've set them down and then not been able to find them, but I should be able to find that one. Let me cut this failed graft off uh, right here. All right, we'll get rid of that. And I will cut the side of it here. Now, when you cut for grafting, you want to be safe. So I'm cutting uh, away from my, where I'm holding it here. Another thing that I do is I slide it, I slide as I cut so that I'm, I'm not having to put as much pressure. Now this is the uh, whip and tongue graft. So I've, I've cut my whip here, now I'm gonna add the tongue. Okay, now this is the part where, yeah, sometimes you can, you can cut yourself. I try not to use a lot of pressure. Um, and so, I'm cutting my tongue right here. Okay, that's a good tongue. Alrighty, now I'm going to take my uh, scion. And uh, in this particular case, I'm right up on my two buds because this is just a little piece that's left. Usually I have more distance, but see, I've got a bud right here. And so I'm going to do my cut on the opposite side of the bud because if I cut on the same side of the bud, it's not as likely to be able to take, right? Okay, we'll start uh, with the base of the blade here and drag toward the tip. Nice controlled cut. I like to hold it up near my chest. It gives me good control. And that was a nice cut. I'm happy with that cut. And now I'm gonna put my uh, tongue in. Okay, you'll notice 
and I've got a split here. Now I'm right up on this bud. I'm not gonna try to use this bud. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and eliminate this bud. Okay, I'm actually focusing on these two buds here. Now for a graft to work, you've got this layer of wood right inside of the bark that's called the cambium layer. The greenish layer? Yep, yep. And the cambium layer for the scion has to be in contact with the cambium layer on your, um, on your rootstock. You'll notice that this graft, the, uh, that with this graft that the rootstock and the scion are about the same thickness. So that will allow for cambium contact on both sides. So as we connect the scion uh, to the rootstock with the whip and tongue, we'll notice here that they just slip together. So they slide into each other and then we press on it to line it up. We want it lined up as perfect as we can get it. We've got a piece of uh, bark that got wedged in there. I don't want that. That can, that can affect the cambium contact. So sometime I just trim that bark out of the way. It's uh, not necessary. If it gets down in between, it can keep the cambiums from connecting. And so I just got a nice nice connection there so I had opportunity to go and and sit in with a, a retired gentleman who for the University of Missouri was over walnut grafting for years and uh, watch him graft oak trees and oak trees can be very temperamental and so he added a step that a lot of folks don't. A lot of folks will just now wrap this graft with tape, uh, and that works. But um, with the oak trees, and I found, I think it's caused my, uh, my grafts to be more successful, uh, he uses a rubber, rubber strip, like a rubber band, but just not a band, right? And this rubber strip, you're able to wrap it. You want to pull it. In fact, as you do this, you want to break a few of them to figure out at what point they break and I may break one on video here today. That's okay, I'll just get another one because you want to wrap it really tight. You want to allow spacing so that the graft can expand as it makes its callus, okay? You want to wrap this real tight and then tie it off. All right. And so that will cause it to have much better pressure than the stretchy tape often will. And you really, he said you can't, you can't wrap them too tight. Now I use uh, buddy tape, that's what he recommended. Before I've used uh, electrical tape and just any other tape. In fact, uh, some people just uh, cut plastic bags in strips. And so almost anything will work. The buddy tape is, uh, is uh, what my, my friend used and it's uh, perforated. You just tear off a strip that long. It's an expensive tape, but it allows for, it, it contains the moisture, but allows for gas exchange. And uh, it's, it's just really good the way it stretches. And once it stretches, it will, uh, it will connect. Now, I start wrapping from the bottom. I don't want rain to get into this. The moisture sent up from the rootstock will be sufficient. And so I start wrapping from the bottom so that it'll overlap, just like shingles on a house, right? You start uh, putting your shingles on near the edge and advance toward the uh, the peak and so I'm just wrapping this I want to uh, as as the rootstock sends up moisture uh, I want it to not be able to escape and then ultimately as the buds open up I wrap my whole scion I've had more success uh, using the buddy tape and wrapping the whole scion than with some of the other other options uh, the buds will go right through the buddy tape. I'll use two pieces on it. A lot of uh, a lot of people will use uh, will use uh, latex paint or uh, uh, heel and seal, and I've used that too. But it just seems like wrapping it in the uh, buddy tape has been the most successful for me. I make sure I wrap over the top and stretch it good so that it'll seal, and then. In two to three weeks, uh, this should be a good graft. Very good chance that that will succeed. I just got a text from Hiram today and the tree that he grafted in the video, it took. 
What are some of the tools that you use for grafting? Well, one of the most obvious for me, which wasn't obvious at first, but I had to go back to, is I needed a, some kind of knee pad. So I just picked up a little uh, knee pad uh, at, at Walmart in the tool area. And so for me, my 47-year-old knees, that's very handy. Um, another thing that I need, um, don't overlook this, my reading glasses. I neglected to use my reading glasses a few weeks ago when I grafted, and I grafted one of the scions upside down. You got to, you know, be able to see. You need to be able to see. Make sure the cambium layer is making good contact. So, I recommend not for everybody, but for those of us that need them. Make sure if you need reading glasses, make sure you use those when you graft. Um, and then uh, we'll get to the knives and knife in just a minute and some of the other things but uh, you need tags you need to know what you have I think you do uh, otherwise you might think you remember I have thought that in the past too but didn't so I order these um, aluminum tags I just got them from Amazon uh, the way you write on those um, it's by indention all right so I just write right on it like if it's red delicious red And if your spelling's not perfect, as long as you know what it is, that's probably all that matters. So I just use a ballpoint pen and it impresses it uh, and uh, makes the indent there to write the word on the aluminum tag. So with the tags, a lot of times uh, they send a wire to attach the tags, but I found that that wire tends to rust out. And so I order aluminum wire uh, from Arts and Crafts on Amazon and then uh, the wire doesn't come in the box with it, not this wire. I've just pushed it in there, stuffed it in for convenience sake for what I'm doing. And then you're going to want uh, just a way to cut your wire. So any little uh, clipper um, wire cutting pliers will work. And uh, then you tie your tag. You tie your tag on. You want to tie it on loose to give the tree room to grow. And so that's one of the tools. Another tool that you'll need if you're working with larger root stock, this is an old saw. There's many versions of just any kind of limb saw to saw it off. And so, and then um, if it's a little smaller uh, root stock or limb that you're working on, um, handheld clippers. And so these are Fiskars, uh, any, any old do. And then a knife. Now, I started grafting with just a knife, just an, an old pocket knife, and you can do that. If you're going to do more grafting, I, I suggest that uh, you look at on uh, Amazon. You can get um, grafting knives for as little as $13. Most of those are double beveled. Uh, the bevel is uh, the sharpened edge. This is a single bevel. The man I had opportunity to study under, to learn under, was using single bevel. He was using a, a much more expensive brand. If you're going to be a full-time grafter, you'll probably want to get that. It's a, a Tina, like a lady's name, T-I-N-A. Uh, this is actually just uh, a, a version of the, the Swiss, Swiss knife, uh, Felco. And uh, it's a good single bevel grafting knife. And um, it's worked very well for me. But you can get by with many different kinds of knives. You don't have to have a grafting knife if you're just doing a few grafts. And then you're going to want some, something to seal in the moisture. And I use the buddy tape. Stuff's like 50 bucks a roll, something like that. Um, but you could, you could do it as cheaply as cutting up Walmart bags, plastic bags, strips about you know an inch, inch wide and long and wrap it tight. People have done it. And so I didn't invest a massive amount in my grafting. So those are my grafting tools. And then I splurged and I got me a $10 box at Walmart to put it all in. Otherwise, it'll be scattered all over the garage and I won't know where it's at. So when I'm all done, I just put it all in my box and I'm good to go. 
By the way, I'm going to have links down in the description and down in the comments if you'd like to check out some of these tools that Hiram talked about. But if you have not seen our video on the simplest or the easiest food to grow in difficult times, you're going to want to check this video out right here. God bless and have a fantastic day.